a parable from Jesus. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate lay a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores, longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abram's side. The rich man died and was buried. In hell, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abram far away with Lazarus by his side. Father Abraham, have pity on me. Send Lazarus to dip his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in agony this fire. Abram replied, Remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things. Now he is comforted here. You are in agony. Besides all this, there is between us a great chasm, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. And the man answered, Then I beg you, Father Abraham, send Lazarus to my father's house, for I have five brothers. Let him warn them so that they will not also come to this place of torment. And Abram replied, They have Moses, they have the prophets. Let them listen to them. No, Father Abram, if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. No, if they do not listen to Moses, they do not listen to the prophets. They will never be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. The word from the Lord in the house of the Lord. Good morning. What wonderful words we have. Here we have a, in the Old Testament, we have a guy who finally got to buy a field. What's the big deal about buying fields? How many of you bought a house sometime or other in your life? How many of you bought, did buy a house? Well, I remember when we moved to Wisconsin. We were moving from Michigan. And I walked into the bank and I said to the bank president, I want to buy this house up on Elizabeth Street and I need X number of dollars. And he said, well, our committee meets on Thursday. We'll let you know. So on Thursday, I went back into the bank, and he said, yep, you can have the money. When do you want to fill out the papers? And I said, well, now it's good. He said, so we sat down, and I signed two pieces of paper. <laughs> and it was done. Two pieces of paper. The last time we did a refi, there were 100 places to sign, 101 signatures, 101. The same bank, when I used to need a car, because I was a traveling citizen, and I got cars fairly frequently, I would go to the dealer and say, I'm going to buy a car, and he'd say, fine, what are we going to do? And then I would call the banker, I didn't go see him, I just call him, and I said, I need X number of dollars for a car. And he said, do you want me to put it in your account or are you going to pick up a check? <laughs> put it in the account, I can leave town. <laughs> it wasn't that easy back in, in ancient Israel. First of all, you had to sell to a relative. If you were going to sell property, you had to sell it to a relative. Only a relative had the right to buy your property. And for some 50 years, there had been no transactions because they were separated from God. And the laws that they lived under no longer were in effect. So they were not allowed to transact property sales until God said to the prophet, now's the time. you served your tenants. You understand where you have been wrong. So your cousin will come to you and want to sell you the property to buy it. But for 50 years, they couldn't buy it. It couldn't be offered for sale. If someone died, the property just kind of was in limbo for the family until this point where God finally decided to forgive again. And that's the, that's the key word in, in, in all of these transactions, again. We, we just bought a car, and there's about 92 pages, I think, to sign on that sucker. 
But I remember, oh, I remember the, you, you remember the good old days. Some of you are old enough to remember all the good old days. We moved to Michigan right after President Kennedy was shot. We bought, rented a house with an option to buy. The option to buy was $250. Ridiculous. And the guy, the banker who handled the transaction for the owner, apologized because they were charging us $275 a month for rent for a one acre, three bedroom with fruit trees. Ah, the good old days. <laughs> they aren't there anymore. And yet, the, the, the planning from God, the purpose of God, the message of God is just like it was in the good old days. I look at how many dollars a month I made when we paid $275 a month rent. And it was a significant part of my salary. And my wife was busy raising little girls. And, so, and, a, and a boy, of course. But the good old days, we remember them so fondly. And then we begin to look at what happened in our lives that made them not quite so good all the time. Paul wrote to his friend Timothy and said, find the rich men, find the rich people, find the wealthy ones in your congregations and remind them that their obligation is to God, not to themselves. I have a bigger house. Hang off. Boy, if you tell my wife I said that, I'm in a world. We have a bigger house. We have a car. But the size changes, but the needs don't change. We need to understand that what we are able to buy, what we're able to have, what we're able to garner to live very comfortably is a gift from God. He's let us do these things. As Obama would say, you did do it by yourself. You have God's help. Because if you have confidence, if you have trust in God's love for each and every one of us, then you can take plunges. You can give yourself away knowing full well that God will protect you. You can do for people knowing that God will bless your life for your efforts. You can love people knowing that God will love you in return. A rich man died and went to hell. Remember the, the parable that says that it will be easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into heaven. But he saw Father Abraham at the distance and said, help me. And Father Abraham said, too late. Too late. There is a time in our life when people say, too late. When we had enemies in Baraboo, Wisconsin, because we bought that house. We came in from out of town, and there were two families that wanted to buy that house, but they had to sell their house first before they could buy that house. You remember those kind of people? And one of those ladies walked up to my wife one day and got right in her face and said, you bought my house! <laughs> We were never very friendly with that. <laughs> Nobody told me it was her house. So I mean, we paid somebody else. Isn't it amazing that we think that we are so privileged that we don't need to pause and say thank you, God, for each day, every day, for the, for the opportunity to love again the way we had loved people. The opportunity to be so much in love with God that we can't help but love everyone around us. So much in communication that we're not like the rich man who say, well, go tell my brothers to change their ways. And the 
parable simply says, oh, if they didn't listen, even if someone rises from the dead, they're still not going to listen. Well, what happened for us? What happened for us? Jesus did rise from the dead, and we believe he did. We understand that he did. We know he did. For we have faith in the promises that were made to us. We need not fear that final human experience. Because the end chapter of our human life is death. But it's only the end chapter of our human life. For we've been promised that we, we too will be beside Abraham in heaven. We too will be beside Moses. We too will be with the prophets. We will, for we will become immortal. We will live eternally with the one who loves us. But unless, unless we're willing to listen, unless we're willing to learn, unless we're willing to love, we will too be on the other side of the deep and white chasm. And there's no, there's no reaching back, according to the parable from Christ. There's no reaching back. So what is it that we need to do? We need to learn to live, to listen, to love. It's pretty simple. Now all the messages are about listening. The Israelis, Israelites, excuse me, not a different country. The Israelites took them 50 years to begin to hear God's voice again. Don't separate yourself. Don't let people be separated from God for that kind of a time period. Keep them close. Close to God. Close to you. Close to love. Don't stray. Don't, oh, there's a whole, whole list of don'ts, but there's only a couple of do's. You will love the Lord your God with your whole being. He will love your neighbor as he has loved you. Live. Listen. Love. Amen. And our cry out to God is, Here I am, Lord. Number 593. Would you stand with me?